Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode six of the video series where we're going over all the different plugins put up by Nick Software. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the raw pre-sharpener. You know, earlier today, I was nosing around the Nick Collection Help website, and I saw this page, their suggested workflow, and I thought this was rather curious. The first thing they suggest you do is to apply the raw pre-sharpener. Then the second thing is to reduce noise with Define 2. Well, that's kind of opposite of what most photographers feel you should do. Usually we feel you should reduce noise first, then sharpen. The reason being, if you sharpen first, you're going to be sharpening noise, and then it's harder to get rid of. But with Nick product, they say to use the raw pre-sharpener first. Now, hindsight being 2020, I probably should have did these videos in this order, pre-sharpener to find two Viveza and so on. But we only have three left, so it, I think it still works out okay. We're going to do the raw pre-sharpener in this video. We're going to reduce noise in the next video with Define 2. And then the final video of the series is we're going to be use Sharpener Pro 3, uh, the, the, the output sharpening with Sharpener Pro 3. So we get to this now, and I'm going to do this image here, this weed. And the raw pre-sharpener, and I'm doing finger quotes around raw, um, it's a horrible name because it doesn't sharpen raw files. Uh, when I first got the Nick collection some time ago, I kept trying to send a raw file to it, and Lightroom kept creating a TIFF file, and I couldn't understand why. And then I read up on it, and I realized it, it's a horrible name. It doesn't sharpen raw files. And really, the reason why we're shooting raw to begin with is we're getting all this extra bit depth. We're getting, um, you know, all this expanded luminance levels, all these extra color depth. And we're going to lose a lot of that if we're going to not do anything to the raw file. We're immediately converting it to a TIFF file so we could reduce noise. It just didn't make sense to me. So I really didn't use the raw pre-sharpener uh, that much. I didn't use it really at all. I learned how to use it, and that was it. Um, I'm going to show you how to use it. Maybe it'll work in your workflow, maybe not. Uh, hopefully along the way I could just pass some general um, ideas on, uh, you know, why you would sharp, sharpen and how to sharpen things, uh, why you want to not sharpen other things. So hopefully you get something out of the video, even if you don't use this raw pre-sharpener. So I, as I mentioned, I have this image of this weed. It's a raw image and nothing was done to it. It hasn't been touched straight out of camera. So we're going to right click on it. We're going to go down to Edit In, and we're going to go down to Sharpener Pro 3 Raw Pre-Sharpener. Now you're going to see this box pops up, and it won't let me send the original. It doesn't do raw files. So we're going to be uh, sending a copy with Lightroom adjustments. There, nothing was done, though. Uh, it's a TIFF file. We're going to click Edit. Now Lightroom is creating the TIFF file, and then it will open up in the Sharpener Pro 3 Raw Pre-Sharpener. Now, it's got the typical layout you see with Nick product, except there really aren't any presets or anything like that. Across the top, we have the views. We have the single image view. Then next to that, we have the split screen view. You can move this slider around. You have the before on the left, after on the right. We have this over under view. You could click there and get a side by side view. I usually keep it on the single image view, and then I click this checkbox for before and after. Next to that, we have modes. And we're going to get to that in a minute. I'm going to explain that. Over at the end, we have what the cursor is. Right now, it's an arrow. We click next to that. It's a magnifying glass. We could zoom in. You could zoom out by holding the Alt or Option key in. Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. It turns into a minus sign. You could zoom out. Next to that, we have this little hand tool. Click on that, and then you could actually drag the image around. Now, what I would suggest you do is you just leave it on this arrow key. You could zoom in and out with the command minus and plus keys. If you're zoomed way in and you just want to get back to the full single image, just hit command or control zero. So it's command or control minus, command or control plus, command or control zero Those to zoom in and out. Uh, it's, again, control if you have a PC, command if you have a Mac. If you're zoomed in and you want to move around, hold the space bar in. You get that little hand key or the little hand cursor, I'm sorry, and you could actually move around that way. So that way you don't have to keep clicking back and forth on these different uh, buttons up here. 
This little light bulb is, um, let me zoom out, is this border, the shade of that border. So we have different shades of gray, basically. Pick a shade of gray you like. Um, now, finally, to the right, we have the actual controls, uh, what we do to sharpen the image. And really, there's only two sliders that control sharpening. And I call them gross sharpening. You're going to sharpen everything from edge to edge. And usually, you don't want to do that. I mean, it's um, Photography 101. You learn not to sharpen like a blue sky that doesn't have any detail in it because you're going to get noise. You don't want to sharpen dark areas because they don't have detail because you're going to get noise. You don't want to sharpen bokeh. Um, you don't always get noise, but usually if you print it, it looks pixelated. So if you have a bokeh, you know, a nice beautiful portrait of somebody with nice bokeh in the back, you don't want to sharpen that bokeh because it will ruin the print. So you don't want to sharpen everything. Well, there are some controls here. They call it selective sharpening, where we're going to control what we're sharpening and where we're applying sharpening to. So let's start out. I'm going to zoom in. So I'm going to hit Command Plus because I have a Mac. Again, if you have PC, it's Control Plus. Hold the space bar in, and I'm just going to move it over here so we see a little bit of everything, kind of. Now, adaptive sharpening slider is really the sharpening, the, the sharpening you're applying to the, to the image um, from 0 to 100%. Um, to, to demonstrate it, I'm just going to put it at 100%. You could hopefully see it applied sharpening. Here is before. And there's after. So it just applied this sharpening. Now, this next slider is sharpen areas slash sharpen edges. The best way I could explain it is if you're to the extreme right, you're a little more um, discerning of what is being sharpened. You're going to look for high contrast edges, and that is what is going to get sh uh, the sharpening applied to it. Whereas if you're at sharpen areas, it's just like laying sh sharpening across the whole image. And usually you, you don't want it heavy-handed one way or the other. You want it somewhere in the middle. So to demonstrate it to you, I am going to just move this all the way to the left where it's so sharpen areas. And you can see it just like sharpening across everything. It's super heavy and you got all this noise. Conversely, if I move it all the way to the right, it is just getting edges. Now if it applies too much to too little of an edge, it looks over sharpened. It looks crispy is what I call it. So how do you adjust these sliders? Where do you, I mean, how do you do it? Well, what I would suggest you do is we'll double click on them and put them back to their zero detent position is what I would say is to start off, take adaptive sharpening and put it at a hundred, zoom in to like I am now and put that at a hundred. We're not going to leave it there, but we're going to start out there. Then go down to the sharpen areas slash sharpen edges slider and just move it to the left so you could get some noise that you that's very obvious that you could see. Then move it slowly to the right and you're, as you move it, the noise will get less and less. So just do that. You can see we're getting less and less noise. You might have to wait a second for it to render depending on the speed of your computer. So go slow. But you're going to find a, play, a time, or point where the noise isn't being reduced anymore. So just keep doing it. And then if you're doing it and this noise isn't getting reduced anymore, then bring it to that point and then maybe just add a little bit more to the right. So just push a little bit more to the right just to make sure. And on this image, it appears to be right around there. there it's not really re reducing any more noise. So in my opinion, that means the sharpen areas slash sharpen edges slider is correctly adjusted. Now, adaptive sharpening is at 100. That is too much, usually, for most images. So what I do now is I'll leave it zoomed in, and I'm going to move this slider to the left, and I'm going to see if it's reducing noise. I'm really not looking at edges now. I'm just looking at noise. And again, there will be a point where it's not going to be reducing noise anymore. Then what I'll do is I'll zoom out to full screen. So I'm going to hit Command-0, Control-0 if you have a PC. And I'm going to just eyeball it. And sometimes it still looks too sharp. It looks too edgy. Then I'll back off adaptive sharpening a little more. Now in this case, it looks OK. Now I'm going to zoom in again. And I'm going to hold the space bar in to move over here. Just so I could show you, there is before 
and there's after. So it did apply quite a bit of sharpening. It is probably just a little bit too much, but I'm going to leave it actually a little heavy right now so I could uh, e more easily show you the selective sharpening. All right, so we're going to zoom back out, hit Command-0. Now, as I mentioned, we um, sharpened everything, and you usually don't want to do that. I mentioned dark areas without detail, sky without detail, sometimes even sky with clouds. People don't like to sharpen the clouds. Um, you don't like to sharpen a, um, a model's skin, but you like to sharpen the model's eyes. Um, things like that. So you want to uh, really apply the sharpening to specific parts and keep it away from other parts. In this image, I obviously have the weed that I want sharp, but the background is kind of a combination of uh, bokeh and dark pixels. So I definitely don't want that sharpened. Two different ways you could do it in the raw pre-sharpener, control points and color ranges. We're going to start off with control points. There's two buttons here. One puts a control point with an opacity of zero, and one puts a control point with an opacity of 100%. And it doesn't matter which one you click, because you can move the slider after you click it. So I'm just going to click this one with the plus. It doesn't matter, all right? And we're going to put a control point right there. And there's two sliders. The first slider controls the size of pixels that are being affected, all right, or the area. And let's say, like, you know, I, I, I could overlap, let's say, let's say, for the sake of argument, just so I could show you, it doesn't matter if it overlaps on this. I'm going to show you how you could control it. We're going to go right to there. But I have opacity at 100. Um, it's kind of opposite of what you think, maybe, or intuitively. You would think opacity at 100 means it's going to block the sharpening. That means, no, the sharpening is being applied. So we want to turn it down. So we're not going to apply sharpening to that circle area for the colors that this little button is over. Now, I want to apply another one over here on this side and do the other half of the image. Uh, we could just get another control point by clicking here. Or since I have opacity turned all the way down, I could hold the Alt or Option key in. It's Alt if you have a PC option, if you have a Mac, and it will clone this exact um, exact control point. And we'll put it right there, and we're going to just make the circle a little smaller. Okay, now, we have the control points over the bokeh, the dark bokeh background. And that's hopefully where we're not applying any sharpening. I say hopefully. Because let me show you, we're going to go up here to this modes, and we're going to go to this effect mask. Now, where it's black is where no sharpening is being applied. So <laughs> I did the whole thing. I didn't really want to do that. I just wanted to do that background. Well, that's where this slider comes into play. What we're going to do is we're going to move that to the right slowly, and you're going to see some of the image start to turn gray going towards white. That means that's where sharpening is being applied. So sharpening is being applied here, but not to the black areas. So this is how you achieve the selective sharpening with the pre-sharpener. So that's the effect mask. The effect overlay gives you just a little different view uh, where you know it's colorized is where sharpening is being applied. Where it's more towards black is where sharpening is not being applied. Sometimes that doesn't work, look as effective as this effect mask. It's a little more black and white, obviously. So we're going to go back to the sharpen image. And I am going to zoom in by hitting Command Plus. And we're going to drag it over here, hold the space bar in. And there is before, and there's after. And you can see it's still sharpening through here. And you can't really tell back in here, but I think if we were going to print this to anything 8 by 10 or bigger, you'd notice the difference if I didn't do that. So that is using control points for your selective sharpening. Now I'm going to zoom back out by hitting Command-0. Of course, it's Control-0 again if you have PC. And we're going to get rid of these uh, control points right now. So I'm just going to delete it, that one. Click on that one and delete it. And we'll just put that down there. All right. So. We got rid of the control points. The reason being is I want to show you color ranges, how to use color ranges. And 
for this image, I think color ranges might work a little better. Uh, color ranges will work better on an image that doesn't have a big range of color in it. This generally, you know, doesn't have a lot of different colors in it. So I think this will work better. What you have here is you have a color swatch. You could click on that and come up with this color swatch or an eyedropper, and then you have the opacity slider. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get this, this eyedropper, and I'm going to click on this white right there and it put the white in the swatch. Now, I want to sharpen that, so I want the opacity at 100%. So I'm going to go down to this one now, and I'm going to get this one. I'm going to pick just something greenish brown, whatever is over here, right? We're going to click on that. And by the way, in the loop view, you could better see exactly what you're clicking on. So you could see we have the color there, and I want to sharpen that. All right, so we do have some other little shades maybe in here. So I'm going to click on this um, eyedropper and we're going to click right there and I want to sharpen that. So we're keeping opacity at 100%. Now conversely, I don't want to sharpen this stuff in the background. So we're going to get another one by clicking this plus sign here. We're going to get this um, eyedropper. We're going to click right there. I don't want to sharpen that, so we're going to move that slider all the way down to 0%. All right, just for uh, to make sure I'll get another one. And I'm going to click a little brighter shade, maybe right there. And we're going to bring that opacity all the way down to 0. So 0 opacity on these two swatches hopefully are going to mean that we're not going to be sharpening that background at all. And these four, I'm sorry, these three uh, eyedroppers hopefully are going to get enough representation of shades of color that are going to be sharpened. So we're going to look at our effect mask, and that did a great job. You can see now black is not being sharpened, and white is being sharpened. And if you prefer to look at this effect overlay, it's just another way to view it. Um, this is being sharpened, and that is not being sharpened. So that, I think, worked a lot better on this image than the control points. So color ranges worked very well. So there is our sharpened image. Now you could zoom in and look at it a little more. Maybe you could come back up here if you so choose and readjust these sliders. I would suggest you don't lose a lot of sleep over it. Also, I don't think I mentioned this image quality, normal or high ISO. All it does is if you click high ISO, it just backs the sharpening off a little bit. Um, if you click normal, it seems to apply the sharpening a little heavier. That's pretty much so you don't sharpen the, the ISO noise. So we're going to, this was I think ISO 100, so we're going to leave it at normal. And I'm considering this done. So I'm going to click save, and it will process the image, and it will return us to Lightroom. And there it is here. It's the TIFF file. And there is our original RAW file that we didn't do anything to, right? See, this is why I, I, I you know, didn't feel like, I don't know, that it was something I would want to use. But let's compare. We're going to hit the C key on the keyboard. And this gives us this side-by-side -side view. And we'll zoom in. And this is the TIFF file. And you could see, I think, that it did a nice job of sharpening right in here compared to there. Hopefully you could see that in the video. We could drag around here. So it did sharpen the image. In my, and I did, as I mentioned, I over sharpened it a little bit. I think I should have probably, uh, before I sent it over here, backed it off. And it didn't really add too much noise. I think there is a little noise, to be honest. Uh, but it seems to be, it did a decent job. You know, all, all said and done, it did a decent job. So that is the, again, finger quotes, raw pre-sharpener that actually sharpens a TIFF file. Um, I hope that helps. And I gave you some tips about what you should sharpen and not sharpen if you, um, if you, you know, never heard that before. Uh, but typically, we do pre-sharpening in Lightroom. Uh, we're in the develop module. We go down to the detail panel, and we do the sharpening there. And um, that's pre-sharpening. Then we could do selective sharpening in Photoshop or somewhere else where, we're, like I mentioned, we're just going to 
uh, sharpen a specific part of the image, like the model's eyes, and we're going to make the skin not as sharp, uh, stuff like that. And then output sharpening is very important. You're going to sharpen an image differently if you're going to send it to the internet or if you're going to print it. If you're going to print it in a 8x10 on uh, photo paper or you're going to print it on a by like a 20x24 20 on fine art paper, um, the size of the print uh, demands different sharpening. The type of paper will command different sharpening. Uh, whether you're doing it on the internet, that's going to be different sharpening. And that's output sharpening. And we'll be talking about that in two more videos. So next one is going to be on noise reduction using uh, Define 2. All right, so that's it for this episode. I hope that made sense. And I hope that I wasn't such a sourpuss about it. Um, that's it. If uh, you guys have any questions, always feel free to email me. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon.